So you're ready to create a YouTube channel. Where do you start? In this tutorial, I'll walk you through the process of creating and setting up a YouTube channel from scratch. I'm Aaron Rutten, a full-time content creator with over 200,000 subscribers and four channels, so I've done this quite a few times. Let's get started. I'll assume that you already have a plan for your channel. At a minimum, you at least need to have an idea of what your channel is about. You can always update the details later if all you have is an outline. Ideally, you should also have at least one video to upload, but that can wait until later if you prefer to just set up your channel first. Before we set up a channel, it's important to know that there are two ways to create a YouTube channel. You can review the details on the YouTube support page, but I will summarize. First, you can create a personal channel. This is a channel that only a single person can manage. If you're a part of a team and you want others to be able to edit and access your channel, then this is not the option for you. However, even if you are the only person managing your channel, you may want to create more than one channel like I've done. In that case, you may want to choose the other option, which is to create a channel for a business or brand account. I have made the mistake of choosing the wrong option and had to start over, so don't let that happen to you. If you were doing YouTube as a hobby and that's all you want to do with it, then the personal account could be fine. But if you want to make YouTube a business or manage multiple channels with or without a team, you may want to choose the business channel. Both types of channels look the same and offer the same features. From the perspective of a viewer, there isn't any difference. But from the perspective of a creator, if I choose business, I can create multiple channels and simply switch between them like profiles. If I have multiple personal accounts or a mix of personal and business, it creates a lot of extra work to log in, log out, and manage multiple Google accounts. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create both types of channels. I will also mention that you can start with a personal channel and then upgrade to a brand account later. We'll start with the personal channel. If you already have a YouTube account, but not a channel, you can look in your account by clicking on your icon in the top right and locate add account or you can go to accounts.google.com to create an account. Click on create account or add another account and then choose for personal use. If you plan to use a business or brand account, choose that instead. I'll show you how to finish setting up a business account later. Enter your information. When entering your email, you can either create an account using an existing email account, or you can create a new Gmail account for your new channel. If you're using this email for personal use, keep in mind that your email address and name will be associated with your channel. This information will be public. On the other hand, brand account emails do not have to be associated with a person's name. If you're going to be using this email for business purposes, then choose a good name that is short, easy to remember, and corresponds to your brand. You can choose the name of your channel and your handle separately, so don't stress if the exact name you want for your email has been taken. I've seen fellow YouTubers' channels get hacked, so don't use an easy-to-guess password. I highly recommend using a password manager so that you can choose a complex password without the worry that you'll forget it. I won't cover it in this video, but I would also set up two-factor authentication for your Google account to add an additional layer of protection. After that, you'll be asked to verify your account with a phone number. This is one of several verifications meant to cut down on spam and fake accounts on YouTube. You can complete this one via text message. After verifying your number, you can skip the options to use your number for other purposes, unless you want to. And then next, you have to agree to the terms of use. Now we can begin to build the channel, but before we do that, let's take a look at how to quickly set up a brand account, just in case you want to create multiple channels. Creating a brand account and verifying it require the same steps that we already looked at for the personal account. So let's take a look at how to set up an additional channel if you already have a primary one. When logged in to your primary YouTube channel, you can go to youtube.com slash account and then look under add or manage your channels. Here you can see a list of all the channels associated with your brand account. Click on create a channel to add a new channel. You won't need to create an email address for new channels because they're already going to be associated with the email of your primary account. You will, however, be creating a new separate YouTube account which is linked to your channel. As I showed you earlier, you can switch between your channels like a profile. Just be aware of which channel you are on so you don't upload content to the wrong channel. It gets a little tricky having to switch between accounts a lot, so what could be useful is to use multiple web browsers, one for each account. 
or use the YouTube Studio phone app to access another account. Now we can begin to build the channel. Whether you're using a personal or brand account, the next step is to choose the name of your channel. This will be displayed publicly, so choose wisely. I won't go into best practices for names here, but it shouldn't be too long or too confusing, and it should accurately reflect your content. You can change this later if you like. Same goes for your handle. This is how people can differentiate between channels with the same name. So again, choose a good handle. If possible, keep your channel name, handle, and email address consistent. If not, then get it as close as possible so it's clear they're all associated with your brand. Next, you will see the YouTube Studio Channel Dashboard. This is the hub where you can upload and manage your channel. Bookmark studio.youtube.com so you can easily get to it. There are little tour balloons with tips you can learn from, but we'll skip past this stuff for now since we're focusing on setting up the channel first. Obviously, without uploading any content, there isn't a whole lot we can do yet. We can navigate through the YouTube Studio using the menu on the left. I'll start in Settings to set up some channel preferences. Let's look under General and ensure that the correct currency is selected. Then under Channel, choose your country and then add some keywords that describe your channel contents. You can always update this later. Next, click on Advanced and choose whether or not your channel is intended for kids. Mine is not, so I will designate it as for adults. You can choose the remaining options yourself depending on your preference. I don't want my content clipped, so I will uncheck that. It's important to look under Feature Eligibility because there are some features that require you to verify your identity to access. Without this, the number of videos you can upload and other aspects of your channel will be limited. I highly recommend you verify your identity to unlock this. Now I will move over to Upload Defaults. Here's where you can choose information that will autofill when you upload a new video. This is something you may want to do later when you get a better idea of what you will be uploading often enough to take advantage of this. I'll go to Advanced, and at a minimum, I think you should save yourself some time and at least choose the default language for your content. If you're using the brand account, you can use the Permissions tab to grant access to other users who can help manage your channel. Under Community, you can choose how to moderate your comments you may want to block certain words from your chat. And by blocking links, you can help to cut down on spam. Under defaults, you can choose whether to enable or disable comments. If you choose to leave them enabled, I would recommend holding potentially inappropriate comments and checking increased strictness to cut down on spam. It's important to note that disabling comments on videos may affect comments on posts as well. So even if you plan to disable video comments, I'd leave it set to hold inappropriate comments and then disable comments on a per video basis. This way your post can get comments if you like. We're all done here, so we can close this out. If you wanna see what your channel looks like to the public, you can go to the top right and choose your channel. However, without any content, it's not likely anyone is gonna stumble across your channel at this point. There are a few things we can customize here if we go to customize channel. Under layout, you can add channel trailers, but you'll need to create those later. Beneath that, you can set up the featured videos and playlists that will be displayed on your channel's homepage. Again, we need content to fully set this up, but do what you can for now. For example, I wanna feature my other three channels, so I will add a section for that and move it up to the top. I will also remove any sections that are not useful to me. If we look under branding, here's where you can upload graphics for your channel's avatar, banner, and video watermark. This requires some graphic design and possibly photography skills, so you may need to revisit this later. If possible, at least create some sort of low effort placeholders to at least fill in your channel with something. If you want some graphic design tutorials to show you how to create this kind of stuff, I'll link you to some videos you can check out. Under basic info, you can edit your channel name, handle, and add a description that will show under about. This can be useful for several purposes. First, it allows you to commit to what your channel is about. You may still be trying to figure this out, so it can be helpful to summarize exactly what that is. Second, an accurate description of your channel and contents can be useful to help viewers determine if they want to subscribe to your channel or not. And third, there may be some search engine optimization value in entering keywords into your description that correlate to search terms you want to rank higher for. Don't stress over the description page too much because it really isn't going to have a huge effect on the success of your channel. Beneath that is your unique channel URL. You cannot change this, but it's good to know where to find it because you may be asked for it in the future. 
Your YouTube handle is a more elegant way to send people to your channel, so you can always use that instead. And finally, you can add up to five links to external websites. You can use this to generate traffic to your videos from your website and other social media channels. Or you can advertise links to products or memberships. When you're finished, click Publish to make those changes public. If you want to see the public view of your channel, another way to do it is to click in the top left of the YouTube studio on your profile icon. At this point, there isn't anything else we can do without some content. So if you don't have anything to upload, make something. Even if it's just an introduction to your channel that elaborates more on what you wrote as your channel description. It's expected that your first videos are going to be terrible. It's a learning experience and you will get better. So don't let that hold you back. I have various videos you can watch about learning how to record, edit, and produce videos. So check those out if you're interested. If you do have a video to upload, then join me for the next part where we will upload, describe, and publish your first YouTube video.